All right, so we have a motor, it's pulling on this crate, and um, the force at which it's pulling is a function of time. So F, you can see it there, F is 20 T squared. Um, determine the speed after four seconds. Okay, now, this, this one, I'm gonna be honest with you, totally can be worked uh, using Newton's second law and kinematics the way that we have done before. No problem. What you need to think about this is as an alternative, okay? So it's good to have two different tools that could do the same thing in your toolbox because you might run into a situation where one time works better than the other. So be proficient at both, okay? Be proficient at both. So here's how we do this kind of thing um, using the idea of impulse, okay? So um, what we're going to do is think first about the, the forces that are acting on this thing, all right? And um, so obviously we've got our tension here and it's going like this. Um, weight, normal force, um, everything's lined up. So the normal force is the weight, okay? So let's write that down. Okay, and then of course we have the friction. Now, it gives us two different coefficients for friction, okay? Now, what this means is we need to take this to mean we don't necessarily know if it starts moving right away, okay? So we've run into this thing before. Um, are we going to have to figure out if it's moving or not? So what is the force, what's the tension at zero? And um, you can see that at um, zero, the force itself is actually zero. So that means it's not going to start moving right away. So for a while, the static friction is going to dominate. And then we overcome that. And then the kinetic friction will take over. Okay. So what we'll do in this case is go ahead and figure out What's the value of the static friction? What's the value of the kinetic friction? Okay, so the static friction, okay, it's mu s times the normal force, which is mg, all right, so that's going to be point, point 0.3. Our mass is 25 kilograms, and g, of course, is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, uh, you run all that out, and what you get is 7558. And of course, that's Newton's, okay? Let's go ahead and get the kinetic while we're at it here. We'll do a similar process. Okay, mu k, mg, 0.25, 25 kilograms, 9.81 meters per second squared, and that's a little bit less, 6131 Newtons, okay? So, um, what we have to do is we have to figure out at what point will our force here kick in, okay? At what time will that force kick in, okay? And so, we're going to have to be um, greater than or equal to the frictional force for that to happen. So, we're basically going to say this right here. So, that's 20 t squared. Okay. So whenever 20 t squared is equal to our 7558, boom, then we're good to go. Okay. Now you run through the math on that and then you're going to get some kind of answer. Um, I'm going to let you do that on your own. For here, I'm just going to call it t, t naught like this. Okay. Um, you'll have to, you know, work out what that value is. Now, once you have that value, okay, that's where our, our idea about impulse will come into play, okay, because our impulse is our FDT. And what you're going to do is you're going to integrate your, your FDT term from T naught up to four seconds, just like this, okay. Now our delta P is going to be a P final minus P initial, okay, and our force for t zero to four is going to be that tension which is the 20 t squared minus the kinetic friction 
which is 6131 dt okay so you'll have that that integral just like that now we're starting from rest which is nice because that tells us we can toss that term that term's going to zero pf is just going to be m bf okay so that's this term here um and then just you know work that integral and divide by the mass there's your answer it's pretty simple pretty straightforward um so you know is this any easier than doing it with kinematics uh it's probably a toss-up we would end up with something really similar although with kinematics what we would do is we would have to there would be a little extra step we'd have to figure out what the acceleration is all right and it's going to be a function of time and that means we would end up doing a dvdt like this okay and oddly enough we would end up with basically the same integral just like that okay so this maybe saves us a step or two okay something like that so but again like i said be proficient at both tools because you never know ahead of, you can't know ahead of time which one's going to be the, the best way to go okay all right there we go so i got one more problem here for you in this series